LOY Studios, live on Campus TV Channel 111.1 and streaming live on WLOY.org slash listen. This is After the Whistle, Loyola's premier sports talk radio show. Tweet at us using the hashtag ATW to hear your questions live on the show. And now, here's your host. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Friday afternoon here at WLOI Studios in Bellarmine Hall on the on the Evergreen campus. And we've got a lot to talk about today. We've got a good show planned, and I'm excited to get into it. But first, I must introduce my other co-hosts. First of all, Jeffrey Bozzi. How are you doing today, Jeffrey? I'm doing great, Colin. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's going to be a good show. we got a lot to talk about. And uh, secondly, I'd like to introduce my uh, my good friend, Jimmy, how are you doing today, Jimmy? Oh, Colin, I'm just splendid. How about you? I'm doing great. And I'm doing really, really well, especially today, because we've got a special guest here with us in the studio. His name is the legendary Jack McCormick. How are you doing today, Jack? I'm doing fantastic. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Happy to be here. I also noticed Stefan was the uh, guy doing the intro. So it's one of my good friends. And uh, yeah, just wanted to highlight. Uh, one of your good friends? Yeah, definitely I'm, one of my best friends. One of my best friends. I'm sorry. I'm glad that uh, we can make your day with that. Um, yes, Stephen Joyce, former co, a former host of the show last year, he uh, so graciously provided the audio for us for that uh, for that intro, and we're we're happy to be able to use it now to debut it this week. But uh, yeah, we have a lot to talk about, boys. First and foremost, the news of the week here on the Evergreen campus was. The men's basketball team, the Loyola Greyhounds, led by Coach Hardy, making it to the Patriot League finals in men's basketball. I, I'll be honest, as a senior, I was thrilled. As a freshman, I would have never expected anything like this, any sort of run like this from the men's basketball team. They've always had talent. They've always had heart. But, you know, the results were never there, especially when I was a freshman. They were absolutely terrible. And to be able to see them be in the Patriot League final is kind of unbelievable because I uh, it would be a really, really great way to end my 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 uh, my four years here at Loyola to watch the men's basketball team. To be able to pick them to win a game in my bracket in March Madness would be just unbelievable. But for those who don't know, Loyola defeated Army this past Wednesday uh, in the Patriot League semifinal by a score of 67-63 came down to the wire, although it didn't look like it would at halftime. Uh, they jumped out to a big lead to start the game, Jimmy, if I'm correct. And I, I, I believe you watched the game. How did, they, how did they get out to such a big lead to start the game? Well, in the beginning of the game, we were anything we were throwing up at the rim, it was falling. We came out of the gates firing. We were hitting threes, no problem. The offense looked tremendous. And another thing I noticed, too, our defense was flawless. We were playing a 1-3-1 one, one zone, and Army um, – they were struggling to make any push to the basket. And when they got to the basket, they were missing. So our defense came together. Our offense came together. Everything was rolling in the first half. Now, if you want to talk about the second half, that is a completely different story because that, that is the issue. I, I, I'm trying to fo focus on the positive. But when it comes to this next game, they cannot play in the second half how they played. Or they can't play on Sunday how they played in the second half because if that happens – they're going to get stormed off the floor with the team that they're playing. I, let's just face it. They cannot play that way. If they play the way they did in the first half, listen, they can beat anybody. We know that. They, they have the talent to beat anybody in the Patriot League. But without a doubt, if they play like they did in the second half, it's not going to go too well. But, you know, the, when the shots are falling, everything looks great, you know. So, I mean, I, Jeffrey, I know you also watch the game. Jack, I know you also watch the game. So, I'm sure you guys have a lot more to add. But Sure. Yeah, um, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, Um. I think like the, like I've been watching this team this whole season uh and Colin you were saying earlier like it's unbelievable that they're in the tournament right now I think that's just like I know I've wa been watching this team all season they have been like they've been there they've been there they were missing people throughout the season Cam Spencer was hurt for, uh, throughout the season um and he's their second option he's one of their best players last season he was one of the best in the country with the ball um and you have Santi Aldama like he is ridiculous 33 points. He had almost half the team's points and one of the one biggest. Miss. One missed shot. 
like that. ridiculous. That's insane. Santi Aldama, I like if if Loyola wins this next game, like knock on wood, Santi Aldama will be going to the NBA. Like you can mark my words on that. This and next, if, they, if they lose, if they lose next next year, you Loyola's if and if Santi comes back next year for his junior season and we get mm-hmm. some some solid bench presence um, with the departures of uh, Johnson and Isaiah Hart, this team, the Patriot League tournament. Is and the champions of for basketball, it's theirs to lose next season. It is theirs to lose. Wow. Jack, cool. another, Jack another thing too is you were you're talking about what they have coming back next season. Say Santi does come back. I think he will. Personally. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I think he'll come back. Mm-hmm. Now, the other thing is the whole starting lineup would be coming back. Yeah. I, yeah. It would be a complete, like, yeah. I understand, like, that we're talking about now, but there's so much more for next season that if it doesn't work out, like, by all means, they have another great shot next season. Obviously, we're all excited about it right now, yeah, but I yeah. think that's a huge part of it too. Is like yeah. we have a lot to be hopeful about. Now, and Jeffrey, you so, watched the game. What, what yeah. else did you think? I just thought they're coming together at the right time. I felt like what Jack said earlier. They've always been there, but they've never gotten over the hump. They've just been there in so many close games. And I think we started zero and four, zero and five. I don't remember which one, but zero and four. Yeah, so. We were losing. Uh, it, was games, right? it was 0 and 5. 0 and 5. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we were in these games early on, and we also were the last team in Division One to start the season. So that kind of hurt us a little bit. But like you said, Jack, we weren't figuring things out right away. But I feel like we're just coming together at the right time. I feel like everyone is just playing together. And I think the key for Sunday will be not only for Santi Aldama to continue his excellent play, but we need the other guys to step up and hit some shots and play sound defense. I think that's going to be the key to take down Colgate because Colgate is no joke. I mean, you just look at their record. They're 13 and one. I mean, they've been cruising through the Patriot league the whole season. It's going to be a tall task, but I think we have a chance. I have a couple, a couple things I want to uh, touch upon Jeffrey, what you just said. Um, those, so Loyola, you were talking about how they lost the first five games, those first four games that they played, they were all within two points. Okay? Seven points total. Yeah. All four games. Yeah. And they're, so American was a triple, o, triple overtime game. Two of those games this season. Lafayette, Lafayette they lost two by two points their first two games. American, they lost by one the next game. And then triple overtime, they lost by two. Then they got blown up by Navy. I'm just walking to the schedule right now. Then they beat Lafayette pretty, pretty heftily by th- uh, 13 points. Uh, then they lost to Lafayette by four. Um, then another triple overtime game, lost by three. Uh, then they blew out Lafayette at home. Lehigh, they blew out. They lost to Lehigh then by four points, beat American by 11. And then, as we saw, Navy took them the last two games of the season, relatively close matches, but uh, ultimately they, they had the upper hand in the end of it. But then we came back firing in that first game. We wanted it. This is the underdog team. If you guys saw in the beginning of the season, the, Patri- the Loyola Maryland basketball team was ranked to be third in the Patriot League. And what happened was is we didn't have Cam Spencer. Cam Spencer on this team, he's so important to have like a spot-up shooter on the team, someone good with the ball. Like this has been like – he was needed and like everything's coming together right at the right time. Like you were saying, Jeffrey. Also another thing, um, Colin, I know you were talking about how like it would be unbelievable for this team to like pull something off as they had just been like terrible ever since their freshman year. Something you have to take into account too, is that like Tavares Hardy uh, came to this program when you were a sophomore. So the year before that, I think it was Gigi Hardy. He was the coach. And once he left Tavares Hardy, he kind of needed to take some time to like get things in in place, like setting up his team. And second year, they have Santi Aldama and Golden DK coming to the team, which is, they've been arguably t- top players. They're both starters. And Santi, Santi is, in my opinion, the Patriot League player of the year. If they yeah, no, he's probably the best player in the Patriot League. Yeah, yeah. Like Jordan Burns won Patriot League player of the year. But the thing is, is the difference between him and Santi is Santi, Santi, Santi was one of three players in the whole NCAA to lead his conference in points per game and rebounds per game. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. This is probably the best basketball player Loyal has ever seen ever. This is crazy. And then you have for, further you have, and then he's the only player to lead his lead, lead the league in points per game, rebounds per game and blocks. He almost averages two blocks a game. This is ridiculous. And that like, so, and we've just been able to develop into this team. Everything is coming together. Now you see loyal. If, and 
Oh, McCormick, another- let me ask you, oh, McCormick, let me ask you something. I just yeah, want to yeah. pause the breaks here. I know we can talk about how great they are. We can talk about how great they are. But you cannot tell me the way they played in that second half, you're not worried. Yeah, so, we got to start getting into some of the concerns. We have. So a couple, a couple things I noticed in that game is obviously the second half was kind of tough. We kept turning over the ball a lot, which like they, and, and something I've noticed, it's a pattern throughout the whole year. Loyola would go on these great runs and they'll be up at the half and have a com- comfortable lead. But like, I'll tell you, I was watching that, uh, that army game and they were up by 15 and like, we saw it. Okay, like I'll use the first four games for example. They were up in those games. Like they were up pretty, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So that's a concern for them because they're yeah, going against they, better they competition always, they now have, than but, they were but, against Army. But see, this is this is what I'm saying. Like they they would usually piss those leads away and they lose those games very down to the wire. But yesterday and the game, or sorry, Wednesday and last Saturday. Loyola was able to hold on to these leads. Like they 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 let them come back into the game. They had a fight, but. Loyola held on, and we haven't seen that a lot this season. They haven't been winning these close games, and the last two games, they have become up big in the biggest stages they've been in all season, all season. Also, just another thing. Oh, sorry, Jeffrey, what's up? Oh, no, you can keep going. I was just oh, raising my hand after you I wanted to, uh, to highlight Colgate as well. Uh, conversely, like, Colgate has three players who are on the first, second, and third team all Patriot League. It's uh, Jordan Burns, uh, Tucker Richardson, and I forget the last guy's name. I apologize. But um, one one player I'm really worried about is Jordan Burns. Uh, you know, he he led the league in assists, was fifth in scoring the Patriot League, and he's a leader. Like, he's been on this team for a while. He knows what he's doing. Um, and I think further, like, um, if Loyola is going to win this game, there I, – I honestly don't know – if there's a guard on, if our three guards can match up defensively with their three guards when they're playing on offense. Oh, that's a concern. Yeah. Jack, I have to, I have to stop you here just for a second yeah. before yeah. Jeffrey goes and then I'll let Jeffrey go. But our guard play in the second half was not good at all. It was not good at all. I know you're talking about Cam Spencer. There's Kenny Jones. There's Jalen Andrews. Those yeah. are three guards. There's Isaiah they're Hart coming off the bench. They're great guys. They're great players. Yeah, they're good players. But did they play good in that game? The second half? No, they did not. I'll say Jalen na- Andrews. Jalen Andrews was the best player in that Navy game. I'm talking about the second half of the Army game, Jack. Okay, okay. Yeah. The second half of the Army game, the guard play was horrendous. Yeah. We turned the ball over like we were giving it away. That's not – that could not fly against the next team. You're right. No, you're also, right. Also, right. our defense, we're getting beat to the rim every single time. Army guards were getting to the rim with ease on our guards, okay? It, it, Kenny, Kenny Jones got blown by a couple times. I love him to death. I went to high school with the guy. He's a great kid, but he was getting blown by. Like, he had some turnovers too. Like, I'm not trying to call anyone out, but, like, they can't do that. And they know this. And the yeah. coach, Tavares said this too. Going into the game, we cannot turn the ball over. We are too careless. We had a bunch of turnovers against Navy. We're lucky to pull that one out. We had a bunch of turnovers at the end of the game. This one, we're lucky to pull that one out. You know, it just has to improve. Now, lucky, granted, they are winning these games, so they're pulling them out. But without a doubt, you can't keep playing like this. Jeffrey, I know you had a point. Yeah, well, everything that you two said, I agree with. But I just want to bring up the fact that our three point defense and you're right. We were letting them, we were letting army get to the rim a lot, especially in the second half. But I know that they didn't make a lot of threes, but I felt like a lot of their looks were really good. And that concerns me, especially when you play a team like Colgate, because the difference between army and Colgate is that army wasn't knocking them down. And you would think that Colgate would knock these shots down. So that could be trouble, but I think we can shore that up. But my other point and I mentioned this earlier, was the fact that we need other guys besides Santi Aldama to step up and hit some shots and contribute because we only had one other player in double figures in the win against Army, and that was uh, Cam Spencer with 16 because everyone else did not have over six points. So that's very alarming to me on offense. So I we really need other guys like Kenny Jones, Jalen Andrews, Alonzo Fare, Isaiah Hart, and others to step up and point, put up some points, even if it's in the 10 to 12 or early teens range. Like, we just need something. How about Golden DK down low? I mean, yeah. you know, he, he, yeah. some, you know he, had, he got some looks down there that he couldn't the get. The body. In the defensively, he was – that Navy guy did not stand a chance. But tomorrow, to, on, on Sunday's game, I don't know how well their big men can shoot, but Navy's big men were, could not – like, they were letting him five feet away from the basket he was giving him space to breathe and golden would just stand there like a brick wall i was looking also like they have a 610 player who's 265 golden stands at, i think 611 260 so it should be an interesting matchup down low like uh for sunday's game but i think our our forwards can definitely take um take the 
So, Jack, did you just hear, like, hold on here. I'm just going to Yes, like, I know. The, the, no, the, the, hold on. Stop. What Jeffrey just said is they got great looks, right? They got a lot of great looks. The Army didn't make them. We are sitting here talking about how Colgate is a great team. They're a much better team than the two teams we just played, right? Like, we can agree with that? Now, the thing is, they're going to get those same looks. The point is, Army wasn't able to get them to fall early in the game. Their offense was coming a bit together in the second half because they were getting these looks to fall. That's where the problem is with our team. Now, I, I understand the point that you're making. There's no doubt. Golden, very physical player. Yeah. But there was also some times where he got beat down there yeah, on some no, rebounds yeah. by a guy who was not better than him. Yeah. It's a concern. But do you want, you want to know something? Like, if you – okay, like, look at uh, look at Loyola, right? They came out firing in the first quarter. Me and every – all my friends we – Yeah, what if they game. didn't come out firing? There would be a concern, just, right? Yeah, just, let me let – me, just follow me. Follow me here. Follow me here. They were coming out firing, shot after shot, Santi splashing in everyone's mouth, right? That first half was a crazy. Second half, not as much, right? Army, they were they they played a not a great first half. Then the second half, they came out firing, right? Right? No, they didn't come out firring to the extent that we did. Well, that was a slow, decreasing well, well, overlead. It was half. a combination yeah. of us playing bad and them just looking like getting some good yeah, looks to finally they, fall. They, they, it they, wasn't they like they a, took over the game, McCormick. They had a better half, though, right? Than us? Yes. Yes, second half. See, college bat like in the Patriot League, we see this time and time again. Teams like usually Loyola comes out to hot starts and then they kind of they they can't close. But recently they've been able to close. But they let these teams come back into play. College basketball teams in the Patriot League, they cannot play two perfect halves. Like there's bound to be some slip ups, and we've seen it with both sides of their opponents. And recently, like there's been. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Give me one. Second. All right. So well, finally, we get to hear sorry, him shut sorry. up for once. Oh, no, God. No, no, Are no, you no. back? Not, You're I'm back? Not, I need to, I need oh, to... my God. Sorry, you got sorry. more? Yeah, I want more. I want All more. right. Want... Go, say yeah. something then. But what I was saying is uh, in the regular season, these teams were having a better, um, worse half than Loyola's, if that makes sense. Like their, their off half was better than Loyola's off half. And that's, what, that's why they lost games. Now they're just they're playing better, worse halves, and that's what makes the difference. Like, and I don't know. Yeah, I just want to say one thing before I get to Colin is that we need to continue these hot starts because I feel like if we get down early, say ten points or so, I just don't know if we can come back. If we dig ourselves too deep of a hole, then I don't know if we have the firepower to come back from that. I think the hot start start is so key. I think the start. I completely agree, Jeff. If Loyola does not get off to a hot start in this game and is not playing from ahead for most of the game, I don't see any way that they're going to be able to keep up with the firepower on Colgate. I did have a question for you guys. I'm, I'm curious about the Colgate team. I'm not a huge Patriot League basketball follower, but I know that Colgate was the favorites to advance to the tournament last year. They were the number one seed, and they were you know, obviously snubbed like every other team of a chance to compete for the national title. No, uh, no. No, no, BU won that game. Boston University won, Colin. Yeah, they beat them in the finals and at, at Colgate. At Colgate. They- okay. Well then whatever. So anyway, they were still the they were still the favorites. They didn't they didn't make it. They didn't nobody had a chance to play in the tournament. Do you think that that gives Colgate some extra uh some extra firepower in their head? I actually I actually have a point about this. Um I was texting someone I know from Colgate and I was like, Oh, like a uh, big game on Sunday, and they were like, Yeah, like Loyola doesn't stand a chance and I was like are you serious like you better watch out and she's just like oh like talking all this crap to me and you know what you know what happened you know what happened she was like I don't even follow the team anyway she's just talking out of her whatever like she she doesn't even know what she's talking about like and like nobody nobody at Loyola like I've been talking about it with people people are excited about this like this they Loyola, should be Jack yeah we're one yeah. winning away from March Madness I would yeah. hope people, and are people excited. Like Colgate aren't talking about it they don't want it as much as they do this is just a normal day for them normal year for them for us this isn't like everything else this is huge if Loyola if Loyola can win this game knock on wood they this the future of this school i think can be changed i honestly do people they're going to be put on the map people are going to start knowing oh, so hold on hold on hold on jack yeah let me slow you down there i would understand what you're saying if they found a way to win the game it does always help to get publicity though or not we know what I happened mean, this, with is, this is the second biggest sporting event in all besides the super bowl this is the second biggest sporting like series of like I, I, whatever jack, i agree with every you year. yeah jack yes yeah. yeah. i'm saying though 
if they go out there, if they win, yes, it will help the school. Like, oh, Loyola, Maryland. Like, you see them in your bracket. Cool. Like, that's awesome. That's good publicity for the school. And I was going to my next point here. Think about what it did for UMBC when they won. I mean, anything's possible. This is March, baby. You never know what's going to happen out there. Great point, Cody. Yeah, no, you're right. It's you're March. Right. I mean, listen, the, we can talk another thing about this, too. We could talk about how Colgate's supposed to be the better team. They're higher ranked. All this stuff. They got the all-league guys. And, you know, here's the Greyhounds who were the ninth seed. But at the end of the day, we beat the a one seed, who's the, supposed to be the best. Colin, I'll go to you right after this. We beat the four seed, who's, who's supposed to be better than us, who actually beat Colgate, by the way. I forgot to throw that out there. Army did beat Colgate. But anyway, we have not cared about our record or our ranking. We don't care about that. We've just gone out there and simply played the game, and we've taken care of business. And it doesn't matter to us at this round because we've been the underdogs the whole time. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to each one of you three with this question, but I'm going to start with Jeffrey. Jeffrey, if you're Coach Hardy in the locker room, you know, game planning for this game, what are the keys to winning this game? If you are Coach Hardy, what are you telling the team that we need to focus on to win this game? So I have two very key points as to how we can win this game. One is, like I said earlier, we need to continue the hot starts because we know Colgate can just light it up. And we know that if we get down early, we just don't want to have to come back from an early deficit. We just don't want to put ourselves in an early hole. I think starting out the game huge is going to be great for our chances. And then my second point would be, I would go all in on defense. I think we really need to lock up Colgate. I think we have to try to at least take away their strengths and specifically Jordan Burns, just limit him in any capacity. I just think if we play really sound defense, I think that could open up our offense. I think that could lead to fast break points, open threes and transition. And I think we're pretty good at that. I mean, you see like Kenny Jones, Jalen Andrews, Santi make threes. We can get on the run and get fast break opportunities. I really think we need to focus on our defense more than our offense to win this game. Jack? Yeah, do you mind just repeating the question? Uh, yeah, sure. Just so so I'm that. saying if you are Coach Hardy game planning for this game, what are the key points that you're telling your team that you have to you have to meet to, to be able to win this game and make it to the tournament? Right, okay. Um, so I think Bozzi hit it right on the head. The defense has to be on point. We've seen it the last couple of games. Like, that 1-3-1 one, one defense is unreal. And, like, they – People can't come out and stop it, but sometimes in the middle of the game, they'll switch to man and it kind of goes away. But that one, three, one defense, you, they need to play that with energy and intensity the whole game. The second thing, just being careful with the ball. Um, I think that's the main thing. I think, honestly, I think yesterday was kind of, or sorry, Wednesday was kind of a fluke. It's usually not like that. You're really not like that miss, not usually that um, dangerous with the ball in their hands. No, but Jack, Jack, Jack. They did that the same game before too. How could you say that's not a that's not a problem? Like right, they did it the same game before against Navy. Like they had the same amount of turnovers. Dude, you can look at their numbers. Like they're Jack. They're they've winning. done it two games in a row. It's a problem. They have to. I, I'm agreeing with you. They got to fix it. We can't yeah. say it's not a problem because it just happened yeah, two it, games in a row. They need to address. They need to. They need to. Tavares Hardy needs to tell his players not to be more careful with the ball. I do agree with that. And then the second thing, um, I noticed like they kept getting open shots because the ball was moving so much in that first. That was like Santi was getting open. Everyone was eating on that. Like everyone, everyone was getting three pointers. Kenny Jones had two right out the gate. Santi was just wet in everyone's freaking mouth. The other thing, though, I think that the ball movement does create shots, but I think people, you, one might think like, oh, we need to keep shooting more three pointers. I don't think that's the case. Like they need to be working the ball to get shots, and if those shots are open, go like go for it. But that three pointer is not like as consistent as it was the other day. Jimmy, what are your so, oh, sorry, my back on. But um, the one thing I would say to focus on, definitely turnovers. If we're giving away the ball and we're giving uh, Colgate a free chance for points, we may as well just uh, pack our stuff in and just give them the win because it's not going to be a very good game for us if we're turning the ball over 20 times. The next thing I would say, and this made me crazier than I, free throws. We need to make our free throws. We are not a great free throw shooting team at all. We have got to make the free ones. If we don't make the free ones, that's going to kill us. Okay. We have to make the free throws. You know, if you're going to get to the line, um, you gotta, you gotta convert. The one thing I always remember my entire life, any coach says this anytime we all, I think we all played basketball here, right? 
they're free. You got to make them, right? No, absolutely agree. Um, okay, I got I got one more question for the three of you. We'll uh, we'll go we'll go reverse order this time. We'll start with Jimmy. Jimmy, fill in the blank. Loyola will beat Colgate on Sunday if blank happens. If they do not turn over the ball twenty times. Jack. Um, Loyola is going to win on Sunday. If that, if that if that defense can can play like that the whole game and Santi can they can't handle Santi that's Santi that's a, that's how they're gonna win the game Santi was unreal like this kid is I, something I've never seen like I don't know yeah Santi Santi going off okay Je- Jeffrey Loyola will beat Colgate on Sunday if blank happens if the other guys show up I mean we can kind of expect Santi to be in the 21 22 23 point range and we need the other guys to show up and hit shots. We will go nowhere unless we can keep pace with Colgate because if we fall behind early and we're still behind around halftime, start of the second half, we're going to need people to make shots and we need those other guys to step up. Yeah, to elaborate on that, I think you look at this team's roster, like, um, and so throughout the season, they've had like, I want to say like 10 players be playing um, throughout the season. Throughout the playoffs, it's been far a um it's been Johnson and it's been Hart off the bench um if those guys can come to play I I don't I have faith that I like Johnson's a pretty good defender um and if he can play good defense he'll be playing the game a lot I would I would keep my eyes on him for tomorrow he'll get some more minutes I I think um Fare like you we saw the Navy game he played really well um and if he steps up and he he plays well he, he didn't have the best outing um, against army he just got to come up and make these shots like just use his body um to bully around these other guys like we have three huge guys and no, no one else in the patriot league has guys that three three like eiffel towers like we do and then the third thing um yeah luke john and isaiah isaiah hart is is a phenomenal leader on this team it's it's evident in the way they play and how he leads um goes about this like on campus and stuff he's a really great kid and i think that um, he's going to provide a really big bench spark, but those three guys, those are the three guys that are going to be they're They might be the X factor in this game. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Great analysis. All right. Quickly, before we go to break, I want a score prediction from all three of you, starting with you, Jack. Or Jimmy. Oh, all right. Well, I guess he's, he, he just talked so much that, you know, he doesn't have anything saved up for the last couple of minutes before break. <laughs> He got it all out before. Give me a score. All right, so the score prediction I got for you here. I'm going to say Loyola 72, uh, Colgate 70. Jeffrey? I hate to be that guy, but I've got Colgate winning 74-67. Oh, do you now you upset the homer. You upset the homer McCormick, man. That's what his score is going to be. Yo, that's not cool, bro. Um, I think, I think like, this – at halftime, this game is going to be – Loyola is going to be blowing them out. But I think this game, ultimately, I think Loyola is going to sweep them. I think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be, like, at least 15 points. And Santi is just going to go off, and they won't be able to contain him. And we're going to play that defense like we, we've been – we're capable of all game. And it's going to be unreal. These boys, I've been seeing them walk around campus. They want this. They want it so bad, dude. <laughs> they want this more than any like they, they've been waiting for this they've been waiting for this moment to go out and get this they're not they're not messing around they want this no i, I absolutely hope so i'm gonna go i hate to be that guy too but i think it's gonna be i think colgate is gonna pull it out narrowly oh I don't... my gosh are you kidding this I team think... is a oh, guys, I told you he's a homer jack team is a cinderella You're... they're a story they want it I'm going to go Colgate 77, Loyola 75. Close close game. Unfortunately, I don't think Loyola has quite enough to pull it out, but I would not be surprised if they end up winning the game, and I would I would obviously be happy. But Jack, uh, you cannot tell me. Where's the school spirit? Jack, 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 Come on. Jack, Come on. This up. is the team. Jack, it's shut up for team. a second. Do you know Come what on. we'll do for our campus if we McCor- win? McCormick, No, and up. analysis too. They want it. They're fired up. They want it. They want this. 
I got to get him. I just have to sit quiet him for a second. McCormick, <laughs> if you just shut up and stop being a homer for two seconds, they just said, if you think you're, con- you're so, you're such a moron. If you think we're just going to blow out the other team, you are not paying attention at all. Every game. You told me this, that we let teams consistently back in the game. You literally said it yourself. And now we're going to do all this and you're going to yeah. tell me they're going to blow it out. Oh, yeah. they're not going to hold the lead against the best team. They, play all season. Call. they think they got it locked up. Guess, they, guess what? They don't. They're facing the hounds. You give us the bark. We'll give you the bite. Don't mess with the hounds, dude. We want it. They think they got it. They're walking tall, walking pretty. Jordan Burns, when he comes up on Sunday, he's not going to know what hit him. He's not going to know what hit him. Tucker Richardson, watch out, buddy. You're not going to know what hit you, man. I love it. I absolutely you love can't, it. You can't knock the kid's intensity. I'll say that. Uh, nobody's a bigger Loyola homer. No, they, Jack, why do you tell Jack, knock Jack. On wood and knock on wood, I will cry for like hours. I will be screaming my lungs out. I won't have a voice for a week. This, oh. Dude, I have never watched a team more intensely than I have this loyal Greyhound team. McCormick. I know what they're capable of. They can do this. McCormick. This is it. This is our time to shine, man. This is it. McCormick, let me ask you something. Sorry, sorry. I'm just super. This, what, I, no, 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 no. Just, just, calm down for a sec. Calm down for a sec. Jimmy, last thing before the break. Go ahead. What? You, you're, you're telling me all these things like, oh, they got the bark. They got the bite. Give me you know, one real reason. What is the one thing that you think that we do better than Colgate that no matter what, you could say when we it, when we win in your mind, we did this. And what is like the one thing that we do better than Colgate that without a doubt will happen on Sunday and will get us the win? Just one thing. It don't. It's not a not a long long explanation because we're going to break. One thing. What is the one thing you think we do better? Consistency. And you know, I know I consistency that. where get, uh, throughout the whole game, playing defense, scoring, getting shots, lead, like our like, offense just was a disaster no, in the last ca- second half of the last game. Hear me out. Hear me out. They haven't proved it recently, like in the, the history of their games, but their mentality going to this game is going to be different than any other game they've played. They're going to be That's not a one thing to fall back on. on That's shoulders. just something you've built up in your head, man. No, no, no. Do you see these They guys? haven't they're, done they're it in excited. the last couple games. You just said that. I've never seen any of these players more excited. They were walking around the quad yesterday, like hanging out with each other. Jack, excitement doesn't get your wins, man. They want it. The mentality is different, Jimmy. I'm telling you. I've never seen them act like this, be like this. They want it. The mentality is different, man. Jimmy, to answer your question real quick, I'll tell you the one reason why I have faith. We arguably have the best player on the floor. That's a real reason. That's not we have the ball, we have the bite. All right. Well, you're going to have to stop there for for the Greyhound talk, but uh, we're going to take a quick break. Thank you, Jack, for joining us. I think we might have Jack stick with us through the break. We're going to talk some more college ball, possibly some NBA afterwards, but uh, you're listening to WLOI. Uh, This is After the Whistle, and we will be right back. Welcome back to After the Whistle on WLOI Radio, streaming live on Campus TV channel 111.1 and online at uh, WLOI.org slash listen. We just got back from a a great segment on the the Loyola Greyhounds and their, their big game coming up this Sunday, but we can't run and miss that. Loyola is not the only team playing this weekend in big games right before March Madness. There are many other college tournaments going on with big teams, many of them who have aspirations of going all the way and and, play, and claiming a banner for their for – their... Hey, hold up, hold up. They, there are other games going on, but I just want to make a point. Like, this is the biggest game in all of Loyola sports. Like, in, in the last 10 years, this is the biggest game in all, all of Loyola sports history. Sorry, nine years, regard, disregarding the lacrosse championship. Yeah, I was going to say, man, lacrosse this, national this, this championship. Is the, this is the biggest game in sports history for Loyola and the biggest game the basketball team has ever uh, – no, when they were in the MAC, okay, when they were in the MAC, but in the last 10 years, since they've been in the Patriot League, this is the biggest game. We should keep talking about this. This is, this is some gold stuff, dude. Uh, we'll, call, we'll come, McCormick. We'll come we'll back. Come back to, to let's just run around college basketball first for one. Jimmy, Jimmy, you want to give us a little, a little preview? Yeah. So there's a couple of different tournaments going on. Most of the major tournaments are going on right now, like the Big Ten, the Big East, the Big Twelve, the SEC, and the Pac-12. I want to hit on the one team that did finish their tournament this week. That was the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Uh, they finished the season undefeated. Okay, so there's no doubt that it stay loyal to make it with a losing record. There's no doubt that they could be a very low seed and potentially they could play a team like Gonzaga, which I think would be pretty cool personally, just because they are the top team. And I, I think that's kind of cool. I don't know the chance that we stand, but knock on wood, if we were to make it, I think it's pretty cool. Um, so they, they ended the season undefeated. They beat BYU in the um, 
West Coast Conference Championship. So some of the other tournaments that are going on, um, you got the Big Ten. Uh, the Big Ten, they're playing today. There's, there's a couple games left. Um, you got uh, Michigan. They beat Maryland today, so they're in uh, moving on. And then you have uh, Ohio State. They're playing Purdue today. So, um, you know, those are two pretty good teams as well. Rutgers and Illinois. Let me tell you, I want to say something about this Illinois team. Let me tell you something. A couple weeks ago, they played Michigan. And um, I, I didn't say this on this show, but I said this to one of my friends, who, my roommate, actually. I said, Illinois' offense is very dangerous. They have a lot of potential. And so then they go out and they beat Michigan, who, I mean, we, we talked about Michigan on the show. I don't know, McCormick, how much you paid attention to Michigan this season. I know Jeffrey and, and Colin paid a little bit of attention. But Michigan was considered to be that next best team outside of Gonzaga. Well, Illinois, go, Illinois goes there, and um, they absolutely destroy Michigan. And they've been on a roll ever since. They play Rutgers tonight, my, uh, my home state, Scarlet Knights. Obviously, I'm rooting for, but I'm not sure their chances against Illinois. I just wanted to say about Illinois, I'm, I'm saying this now, I think they have to be, the, like, in my opinion, they're the team I think is going to win the Big Ten. So now let's go to the SEC, or not the SEC, the Big East. Um, that's a very competitive conference, as we all know, because a lot of the teams in that uh, conference aren't very great. So the one team that everybody knows in the Big East is Villanova. Well, Villanova's out. Villanova lost. Jeffrey, I know that's your team. That's the college basketball team you root for. They're, they have so many. They had so many injuries. They're a team going into the tournament. I just want to throw this out there. They could lose first round. I mean, Jeffrey, I'm sure you watch Villanova because you're a fan. Do you have anything to add about them? Oh, if they're a three, four, or five seed, I will pick the 12, 13, or 14 to yeah. win. I actually will. Not they're just because I love the 12, 13, 14 seeds, but I feel like the wheels are just coming off the track. I mean, yeah, it's a perfect everything's just going running. wrong. Everything's falling. Just everything's falling. Yeah, that's a perfect way to describe it. Um, so – they're they're out. So the le- the four teams left in the Big Ten or the Big East tournament are the Seton Hall Pirates, um, the Georgetown Hoyas, who who've made a run. They beat Villanova. Patrick Ewing's Hoyas. Yeah, Patrick Ewing. Oh, I just want to I just want to throw this in there about Patrick Ewing. Did you guys see that he got like asked for a press pass yeah, at MSG? Yeah, yes. Yeah. How does that happen? As a Knicks yeah, fan, that infuriates me. How does that happen? I mean, the people working security at MSG are not necessarily Nick fans, and many of them are probably too young to ever watch Patrick Ewing play. So it's Patrick Ewing, his exactly. number and his name are hanging in the rafters. Yeah, did you? I just want to bring it up. Max Kellerman said this on first take this morning. He said, "Whoever the security workers were, you see the seven foot guy walk in. What do you think he not plays basketball or didn't play you know, basketball? Like, are you kidding me?" A couple of years ago, happened to Spike Lee. He was like, "Do you know who I am?" And they escorted him out of the MSG. It's happened before. Oh yeah, and that's Charles right, Oakley that's too. Well, Charles Oakley was different. Oh, he got banned. a fight with James <laughs> Dolan. <laughs> still, yeah, still, he really got banned. He's still, he's still like famous. He did Nick get player. banned. That's right. I don't. You know, this is. I know we're not talking about the Knicks. Why did? Why are they always just the most inept franchise in everything? How do you disrespect like the great one of the greatest players in maybe right. the history of your team? Imagine they're rivaled, they're rivaled only by the Jets. Which is hilarious. Maybe the Browns. Maybe the Browns. Imagine the Patriots like in 20 years, Jack. Just don't let Tom Brady. They're like, yeah, no, we don't know who you are. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Nick's uh, was, Nick's number will be in the rafters. You watch. It wasn't Nick security. It was Nick, Nick's draft MSG draft security. Either. So it's a little bit different. I, I'm not going to forgive them for, you know, giving them a hard time. But security is probably one of those jobs where you don't just want to assume that people are who they say they are. So yeah, I don't really true. have a problem with it. But I feel like also you should know who um, uh, Patrick Ewing looks like. Anyway, yeah. the second half of the Big East tournament, Connecticut and Creighton. So one of those four teams are going to go um, back to the tournament. Now the other conference that I think is the big deal, the third other conference, is the Big 12 tournament. We got Oklahoma State. They're playing Baylor. And this is where some of the hottest teams are. Okay, Texas, they're playing good basketball right now. Kansas, they're playing really good basketball right now. Oklahoma State, they're playing really good basketball. I'm telling you, there's a couple teams there who I think can make some dark horse runs. And then there's Baylor, who's the one seed. There, I'm telling you, this conference is loaded. Oklahoma State is a team you should all be watching out for in your brackets. I am telling you that right Oklahoma now. Oklahoma State has the kid, Cade Cunningham, right? Cade Ken- yep, Cade Cunningham. He's a very good player. He, they won without him. And so he, can- he comes back, and-, and now they're making this run in the Big 12 tournament. Their team with a lot of potential. So that's just the, the team. couple thoughts that I have for them. Um, 
I, th- you're just sounding like an idiot at this point now. So we'll circle back to Loyola because I know we, uh, we, that is the point of our show here, but I just wanted to go over where some of the other conference tournaments were. McCormick, if you talk the same time as me, nobody can hear either of us. All right. So, all right. Now, what are you saying? Did you talk about the Mountain Valley Conference at all yet? The Mountain Valley? The Missouri Valley or the Mountain West? Which, which, which one Missouri, are you? Missouri. It's the Hybrid League. Actually, can I, can, <laughs> I jump in here? Both. can I jump in here real quick? I have breaking news. Kansas has a positive COVID test. They had to forfeit, so Texas is moving on to the final. Wow. <laughs> okay, also, I want to hit on this, too, because I know we're talking about this. These are yeah, two we should stories. Talk about this. Virginia, COVID. Duke, COVID. I am so happy. Coach K, after the things that he said to that student reporter, where do we go from here? Thank God he finally got his karma and he's out of the tournament. I'm so happy not to have to see Duke. I cannot stand Coach K. I cannot stand Duke. I know there's a lot of people who love Duke out there. I don't know how you could like Duke. Jimmy, I do want to say I was a bit disappointed that they had their hearts broken this early. Like, I really wish they had made it to the finals, then lost, and then been one of the first four teams out because uh, that would have just been sweet justice. That would be uh, nice. Uh, I agree. <laughs> it, it's always a good day when Duke loses, man. It is a good day when Duke and loses. So, so now that means that in the ACC, Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech's in the final, and they're going to play either uh, North Carolina or uh, or uh, Florida State. So that crazy. would be a big, big movement. Yeah, Jack, I know you have stuff to say. Go ahead, buddy. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I was uh, like further with the COVID stuff, like, um, like Duke, like you see them, like they could have made a push for the ACC tournament and like Kansas too now. And it's just happening. Like these, these players have to have to really be careful about what they do. Like uh, at Loyola, like, and if we want to like actually do something significant this weekend, they gotta, they gotta stay safe. Um, another thing too. Um, uh, wait. Oh, uh, I just want to touch upon the Mountain Valley or Missouri Valley Conference. Um, you saw like Loyola Chicago, and you're seeing one of their first, maybe one of their first at-large bids in a long time with Drake. They they started the season off really hot. They were under the longest undefeated team in the country, and then they lost their spot. And uh, Loyola Chicago ended up taking the first spot and took the took the title for that. Um, we saw a couple of years ago with their run too. Like they're they're pretty capable of stuff as well in the tournament uh, with Sister Jean. She's still she's still she's still there. She's 102 now. Fun fact. And you as big a, oh well, Jack, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, Are yeah. you as big a Loyola Maryland fan as Sister Jean is a Loyola Chicago fan? Ooh. And do you think there's any chance that maybe well, if they both make the tournament that maybe you and Sister Jean can mix up? Because I'm not sure that there's any two bigger fans. Longevity. I think she got me because she's like old. <laughs> Yeah. No, God, she knows she doesn't know her stuff like I do about this team. I've been and I know them like the back of my hand, man. I know them like the back of my hand. And you know, you saw a couple of years ago with uh Loyola Chicago, they were an 11 seed and they went to the final four. I think yeah, they had a really good regular season, too. Yeah, and if Loyola like knock on wood, like if they if they can win this next game, knock on wood, knock on wood. I think they're going to get a 14 seed because you look at the rest of these conferences like Prairie View, the SWAC. Like, you don't think they'll be a 16 seed? They were no, a team I, with a losing record, Jack. That why, really hurts why. their case. Here's, here's why. Here's why. Here's why. If they win, knock on wood, I think they'll get like a 14 or 15 seed. And this is the reason why. Because you look at all these conferences. Like Patriot League, I've, I've done it out. I've looked at all 32 conferences. Uh, the Patriot League is mid pack probably around 15. There's like some, like, uh, for example, you take the West Coast Conference, you take Gonzaga out of that conference and BYU, or not even BYU, you can leave BYU. They're pretty on par with one another, I will say. But it's Gonzaga at the top. Who's our Gonzaga? We, no, that's what I'm saying. We don't have Zaga. Zaga should be the outlier. Like, yeah. Zaga should be in the pack 12. Oh, no, for the rest of the conference, the rest of the conference, I mean, I would think that, you know, maybe there's some. Yeah. It's, it's it's hard to compare the West Coast and the East Coast mm-hmm. because you have to remember those two schools like this too. But, those schools out there that are in Gonzaga's conferences, yeah. they're like a lot, a lot of the Patriot League schools. Is sports like their number one thing? No, like they're more worried about like their academics, right? You're so right. I mean, that's another thing too. I mean, I would agree with you that there there is conferences that are uh, below. Patriot League, I think mid pack is just a stupid comment. Mid pack, it seems high. I mean, mid pack is definitely way too high. If you're if comparing, you say, if you're comparing them to the Mountain West Conference, BYU is going to get an at large bid. Well, if Bill Gate loses, BYU is in the West Coast Conference. Okay, okay. But, but all, anyway, I think it's sure. just like they're like the lower third of the conferences. I'm not saying they're the lowest; they're not at all. But 
I mean, they're definitely they're definitely on the lower end. I don't so think my the package is incorrect. Is like Loyola, like they're going to be a 14 or 15 seed because of these other conferences. Like Prairie View, I think is coming out of the SWAC. Like what? You even know where that is? I don't even like, I don't know. I've never heard of it. Like there are the uh, conferences that have all these schools that are so small and nope, not a people, not a lot of people know about it. I feel like Loyola has some credit, like credit, like recognition. Like Jack, recognition. Jack that's, that's us. us. That's uh, us. We're the no, small no, conference. No, because dude, like, like we're in the Patriot League with Army and Navy. Like people know this conference. Like and further, I think like once we get to this game, once we get to this game, this team's gonna be the first 14 seed to make the final four. You heard it here first. <laughs> Whoa! Wait, this just, you're like losing all credibility. You're wasting the cow with the. Veins on earth. This kid is ridiculous. You, you just wait, just wait, just wait. Jack has made it a person to come up with more and more ridiculous it's takes. Like, it's like, how, how, how low can he go? Like, you gotta <laughs> ask yourself, like, what is the next? He said, he said, I don't know if you guys heard this. We were talking about Cade Cunningham, and he snuck this in behind it. He said, Cade Cunningham is not near. Is uh, is we we're talking about how Cade Cunningham is play. He goes like, yeah, well, Santi is even, even better. How can you compare? <laughs> Cunningham and oh, Santi. Santi. Jack, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I let me finish, and then you will get to talk. You haven't shut up since you showed up. The only point I want to make is the competition that he's going up against and Cade Cunningham is going up against is nowhere – like, they're, they're not comparable. The, the Patriot League guys, the guys on Army's going to even make a shot compared to the guys right. on uh, – Oklahoma State. And I, I know. I, honestly, like, I, I don't actually think Loyola is probably going to make the Final Four, but I think if they do, they win this next game and they win the game after that, I think there's a high probability if they make the tournament, they can come out as a Cinderella story. I really do think they can make the round of 32. And further, they they may they may go to the Sweet 16. Like, I, you never know what happens in March. Seriously. Like, yeah, but you said they made the Final Four. Obviously, you could just say, I know. listen, I, anything I, happens I, in March, I, I like our chances. Honestly, honestly, I think they, they could have a shot at the Sweet 16. And furthermore, like, if, if this happens, dude, you will see the crazy. It will be like, um, like this campus will be on fire. That's not, yeah, that's how crazy things will be. I have a great quote for you, and I, yeah. I, this is a great quote I have. When the possibility is uncertain, the outcome is in, or in, like it could be anything. What? Can you can you repeat the quote again? When the out, uh, I think it's oh, hold on. Let me find the quote now. I'll come back. I think it's like when the possibility is uncertain. Or when the outcome is uncertain, the possibilities are endless. That's what it is. Santi over KD. Give it 10 years. You will see. You can't. Yeah, Santi at 25 versus KD at 45. Colin, Colin, I have a question for you. Sure. Are we going to Indianapolis if they punch their ticket? We're going to Indy, baby. We're going to Indy. All right. (laughs) I I was thinking about it, and I was talking with people about it, and I I do want to go. But aren't isn't it only like twenty five percent fans or whatever? Yeah, it is. I believe so. I don't think going to Indianapolis would be worth it for the first round game. But if they won the first round game, I might go to the second round game. I mean, it would be it would be a once in a lifetime experience, truly. And I uh, why are you taking the final four at that point, dude? <laughs> but uh, I would I would seriously consider going. And we could we could do a little segment if you wanted to come with me. We we could go to the game. But uh, what about you, Jeffrey? Would you go? Oh, I would definitely go. Are you kidding me? I mean, I don't even know if they're going to get past the first round, assuming that they get there, knock on wood. But you know he went to cool? the Eagles Super Bowl. You think he wouldn't go to this? You know what would be cool? What if, they, what, what if they got to play a play-in game, a game that they could yeah. actually win? I think that would be awesome. And I, I want to go off of that. that. Colin, I want to go off of that. I am 100%. There is no doubt in my mind. I don't care if they play – let's say they're 16. They play Gonzaga in the first round, assuming they make it. There is no doubt in my mind I'm taking Loyola to beat Gonzaga. 100%. <laughs> no, not a doubt in my mind. So do we have any tweets? I'm sure there's got to be tweets, right? I, I've been looking. There has not been a lot of tweets lately. But, uh, Jack, I think you have more to say if you want to say – oh, we do have a tweet. We do have a tweet. Oh, I just I'm have sorry. one quick thing really quickly. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going with anyone to, to Indianapolis who thinks Colgate is going to win on Sunday. That's all I'll say. That is a, that's a funny point, bro. I do like that. He finally said something smart here. You got to ride or die from the beginning. Ozzy said Colgate was going to win by two. I won't forget it. Oh, hold on, hold on. Don't, I won't he, he at least – Oh, I said seven, seven, actually. Colin said two. I said two. <laughs> Watch out, Ozzy. You're going to be the first person I come to when Loyola wins tomorrow. Or Sunday. Oh. 
Thunder. Oh, they play Sunday. Knock on wood, knock on wood. Knock on wood. Yes. <laughs> All right. For the last couple minutes of the show, we do have a tweet. It's about the NBA, though. Do you guys want to? You want to talk about the NBA? Sure. First? Let's see. Let's yeah. honestly. I'm all for whatever today because this show has just been a crazy train. You know the song <laughs> Crazy Train by ACDC? That's been this show. Crazy Train should, what we, should be what we go out to. You mean Ozzy Osbourne, today. literally our commercial song? Um, listen, uh, I, never <laughs> said I, was, I never said I was a smart guy. I thought that, remember, Lafayette was the leader of the you were Leopards. an one. I thought maybe you were an observant one. I, maybe I thought too highly of you, Jimmy. But, uh, okay, anyway, we're going to go to the tweet. It's from another one of uh, from Cody's friends. Uh, at Matt McHale 15. We had him on a couple of weeks ago. He's a uh, cheater. He's had, he's had tr- personal beef with the show ever since. He's had personal beef with me. He tweeted at W L O Y A T W. Colin, how about that beatdown Kyrie Irving handed the Celtics last night? Do you still think Jalen Brown is better than Kyrie? Also, he hugged all his former teammates after. Maybe Kyrie wasn't the issue in Boston. To that, since it's directed at me, I'll go first. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down sentence by sentence. How about that beatdown Kyrie Irving handed to the Celtics last night? It was unbelievable. I watched the last five minutes of the game. Kyrie was the best player on the floor. Uh, K- KD was not playing, but I was surprised that Blake Griffin didn't play at all. Which is you know maybe first game with the new team, got to learn the system, whatever. But to not get any minutes in the in the first game, he's not hurt, is he? I don't think he is. He was on the bench. No, but he hasn't been playing, so he's got to take a little time to work into it. Sure, I'm he's probably not. Nothing now. I'm surprised he didn't play like five minutes. He should have been at least on the floor. He but, also might uh, be in COVID protocols. But he was on the bench. So why was but he on? was? Yeah, he was on the oh, bench. Oh, I had no idea. No, he was on the bench, so I'm not sure why he didn't play at all. But uh, Kyrie Irving was the best player on the floor last night. The Celtics got slapped around. Uh, being a Celtics fan is really hard because they are a complete enigma of a team. They'll go in and they'll they'll play super well. They're kind of like Loyola. They'll play really, really well in the first half. And they were I think they were up eight or nine at halftime. But then, you know, the Nets are just the better team. They came out and showed it. They, they are. Um, do you still think Jalen Brown is better than Kyrie? I never said that. I said that Jalen Brown was the more exciting player who played above the rim and was more athletic than Kyrie. I never said he was the better player. That's not true. I feel like he did. I mean, I'm trying to think back. And I know I'm pretty sure we have it recorded. But I, we'll look through the I, I feel like you kind of did say that. But you well, can we just I say, said, if, said, if, it, if, you, if you didn't or didn't say would you say right now Kyrie Irving's the better player? Yes. All I right. So Brown, then it's over. Now it's over. Now it's over. The only thing I said was Jalen Brown is the better, exciting, more exciting player. And I said that he had the better season and was more deserving of the All Star bid up to that point. That's what I said. And Let's I hear with the other Celtics homer in the building. I can't imagine what he's like with Boston Celtics sports. Fan. Oh, he's oh my god, he's ridiculous. I'm a I'm a huge Boston Celtics fan. I've been I've been watching nearly every game this season. Um, I bought myself a Peyton Pritchard jersey. You want to, I'm, I'm not as passionate about the Celtics as I am with well, just because it's March. It's March right now, you know, and I didn't watch the game last, unfortunately. But I'll tell you, the Celtics have been looking for the stretch four um, all season. You know, we like Marcus Aldridge might be a good pickup. He was just released by the Spurs. He's a little old, but, you know, there's not much else on the market. I've heard a lot about Jerry and Grant, but I don't think the Celtics have enough assets to be able to match that contract he got for $20 million this past off season. Was Aldridge actually released? Yeah, yeah, Aldridge is available. Oh, he got released? I thought they were just yeah. looking to trade him. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're getting rid of him. Um, one thing I do think, though, the Celtics, like, their main issue is, like, they – all season, they uh, – Robert Williams needs to play more for starters. But they, I 100% they, agree. Yeah, and they need to stop playing Thompson and Tice as much. But I think they need that, like, stretch – that stretch four or five, someone who can go up and get boards. And you know who that kid is? Santi oh. Aldama, baby! First round pick! Don't sleep! You, All right. I mean, if that – listen, McCormick, you, you said earlier in the show you think he's going to come back for another year. <laughs> All right. All right. La, la, the last part of this tweet was he hooked all his former teammates after maybe Kyrie wasn't the issue in Boston. Um, I think that anybody who knows they have the spotlight on them is willing to play nice for a few minutes at the end of the game. You know, they're buddy-buddy. I'm sure they don't hate each other. But if you watch that Celtics team in 2018, was it? 2018, 2019, it was clear that they were not on the same page, especially in that Bucks series and the, the Eastern Conference semis. It was clear that Kyrie Irving was not working as the team. He didn't distribute the ball well enough. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum had grown into bigger roles than he was willing to give them. And 
I'm glad that Kyrie is not on the Celtics even anymore, even though he is a great player. I will acknowledge that he is one of the best players in the league. He's a top 10 player in the league, I would say. And uh, I'm glad I, I, I'm glad they went their separate ways, and I'm glad Kyrie is doing well. But, uh, Jeffrey, I want to hear what your thoughts are about this tweet because we haven't heard much from you about this yet. Well, to go to your point about how Jalen Brown and Kyrie Irving – or, or you said J. Just to make sure, you said Jalen Brown is more exciting than Kyrie. I said that Jalen Brown is the more exciting athletic player who plays above the rim. Uh, that's right. something about yeah. I personally so, like watching. So more. here, I agree and disagree with you. I agree he's more athletic, but Kyrie's the more exciting player. I mean, come on, the guy with the with this handles, the shooting, the shot making. I don't know how you can say that Jalen Brown is more exciting. Well, we can get into that later, but I don't know. All I'll say is everyone's still chasing my Sixers. So <laughs> I'm just enjoying the number one seed for at least another day. <laughs> Jeff, that's got to feel like quicksand, the number one seed. Hey, we had a we went into Chicago and beat the Bulls by 20 last night without a beat in Simmons. That's all I'll say. Yeah, it's a nice win. Jack's got his hand up very politely. Jack. Yeah, hi. Um, I To further on that, that point, um, Kyrie definitely was on the Celtics. He just wasn't the right fit. Um, it was unfortunate because we had such a good team that 2018-19 season. Um, we could have chased – we had the opportunity to win four championships that year for each major sport, but it just didn't work out the way we wanted it to. Um, further, I think that Kyrie is a more exciting player to watch. I think he's a lot more to handle, though. As we've seen, it's evident this season that he's been causing some problems with, like, uh, going to family parties and not games and stuff like that. I personally would rather have Jalen Brown on my team. I think he's more – that's stupid. That's stupid. You would rather have Jalen Brown and Kyrie Irving. You're stupid. Yeah. I think I think Jalen is more consistent. You can rely on him more. I think Kyrie is the better player, though. Like I will be real. Like I think Kyrie is a better player for sure. Um, but I think he's a poor leader, and I think Jalen is a much better leader in what the Celtics need more than what Kyrie is. I think Jason Tatum, them them two together, is going to be like something crazy, something to watch for in the next four to five years. Um, but yeah. Can I ask you some both Celtics fans really quick? Yeah. Sure. So, before, before we end, yeah. Right question here. So, Kyrie Irving, he's going to the Nets. You guys are talking about the problem he is, what everybody talks about the problem he is. They seem to have no issues after what happened. They're on a roll right now. They're absolutely firing on all cylinders. Do you think maybe Kyrie wasn't the problem? Like, do you think maybe there was another issue there? Like, maybe Kyrie wasn't the issue at I all? Think the, I think the issue came down to the fact that Kyrie missed that entire 2018 year, basically, and barely played at all. And Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum were a lot better, a lot sooner than most people thought. And Kyrie was not given the role that he was promised when he brought in, and he had issues with that. He wanted to be the star. He wanted to be the main attraction. But after seeing what Tatum and Brown were capable of, the Celtics were like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, maybe – we're going in a new direction and Kyrie didn't like that. And I can understand it wasn't a hit to his ego and he just wasn't a fit in Boston. Unfortunately, that was the issue. Yeah, Kyrie, okay, that's Kyrie a fair point. 100%, Kyrie was hundred percent. The main focus of that team, Jalen, Jalen, Jason Tatum was a uh, second year going to his third year when Kyrie left and, Tate, and Brown was going into his fourth year after he left. Like it wasn't, they, they hadn't had their strides yet. You know what I mean? Like there were good solid bench players at that time. Like, Tatum started actually Brown was a bench player believe it or not like but what point like I'm confused what your point is going to be here like you're saying they that it shouldn't have been an issue then I'm just asking you what you think the issue was with the team like do you think maybe it wasn't Kyrie I think Kyrie had a bloated ego I think he's gotten mature a little bit more like I think that's that's a very real possibility like he's definitely that experience it was his first leadership position on a team outside of his rookie or first couple years in the league without LeBron like Mm -hmm. I think he always had someone's someone to suck on and now it's just like now it's different you know like he he was the leader in that position and now he's back sucking on someone else KD and he has someone leading that team and it's not him I think that's how he works he's not a good leader and that's that's ultimately I would agree there all right quickly last thing anybody have anything they want to shout out for the weekend Hounds baby let's go check out Hounds Hounds. he's got the Loyola basketball jersey I know we didn't get to say this on air but he's got the Loyola basketball jersey let's get this bread all right let's do it uh Thank you guys for for uh, 